Hi guys, so welcome to 2024. Happy New Year. So before I get started, again, hopefully all your holidays just went well. I'm uh, sorry for taking it a little long and not uploading a video for a week, but I'm back. Uh, it's just been crazy. Uh, if you guys can do me a favor, one goal I do have for this year is to at least reach a thousand subscribers. So you just can share this uh, channel for people that may know that may have similar cars or are looking for a car um, and wants to know about features. And also, if you guys want to recommend me videos to do next, obviously, I'm focusing on Honda right now. Eventually, I'll go up to maybe Infinity, Honda, uh, BMW, Benz, Mercedes Benz, or if something we get pre owned wise, I can go over it again. I'm most open to suggestions, but like again, if you guys can help me out, gain more subscribers, that would be amazing. Okay, so I'm gonna go over the Honda Accord Hybrid Sport. So, this is the beginning level for the hybrid, uh, the Accord. In the hybrid side, you have the Sport. Then you can move up to the Sport L and then the Sport Touring, which has everything on it. If you're interested in only looking gas, unfortunately, they only brought two levels, which is the LX and the EX. Um, but again, I'm going to go over features, questions, leave it in the comments. Please let me know how I can help. Uh, first thing is remote start. Doing remote start is pretty simple. You click lock twice and then you press and hold the circle right here. You wait for a flash to appear like right there. And then once it turns on, it's going to give you the multiple flashes. So with the remote start, it stays on for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, it will turn off. It takes out the temperature from the outside. Outside, it makes it hot or cold inside. Let's say you change your mind, you don't wanna go out anymore. You simply press and hold the circle, turns off the car. Summertime, how the heat gets inside the car, I like to open all my windows ahead of time and remote start the car. So the way I do it is I click unlock twice, then I hold. So I put all the windows up. Once I keep holding, it also opens the sunroof as well. So I like to open all the windows and then click lock twice, remote start the car and get the air to start flowing all the hot air out. Hot air out. Just like that. And again, if I change your mind, just simply fold the circle, takes off your, turns off the car. As long as the car is unlocked, this will be open. And then once you lock it, it will not be open. There's only a couple of times you wanna have the, the key fob out is when you wanna remote start the car ahead of time, open your trunk or the key inside. The key inside has a couple uses. So all you do, sorry, I work on getting something better. So all you do, you press the square right here and you pull the key. You still have a key. The, there's a couple of things you can do with this. One, if you want to raise the windows, it's in an air core angle. So you have the key slot right in there. So I'll put the key inside, put it lock position twice and hold. And then the windows will come all the way up. It's a little awkward. If not, you can just get in and turn it off. Another feature for the key, I'll go over in a little bit. It's just to open the trunk in case of an emergency that the power dies. But that's the only time you need the key out. As long as you have the key, uh, again, you can just press and hold the trunk button. It will open the trunk for you. Or as long as you have the key with you in your pocket purse, there's a little handle right here. So I'm gonna close it, lock the car, I'm put this in my pocket. You simply press that little handle right underneath the H right here. Press it, opens the trunk for you. So this is your trunk area, pretty big area for the hybrid. You do have a little kit to fill up in case you need to patch the wheel, I mean the tire, in case of an emergency. But also you are less in the winter time, you tend to lose a little bit of PSI in your tires. You can use this as a pump as well, right there. But this will also have a little chemical inside, patch the wheel for 50 miles so you can get to another dealer. Oh, you're missing some air in your tires, you can just simply pump it through here. And then you have a little bit of cargo space in the back. Okay. So, with the Sport Hybrid, you have last month's sensors right here. And right in the other mirror, those will light up orange when someone's in your blind spot. As long as you have the key with you in your pocket, purse, whatever you keep your keys, you can lock the car by putting your finger over these three lines. Or if you want to open it, just put your hand over. Simple. 
Okay, let me get inside. All right, inside the car. You can make your own custom screen. I'll go over them a little bit, but I'm also gonna go over this stuff first. Let me turn on the car. All right, so here's your mirror controls. Both the driver and passenger are powered. So all you do is just hard press down, opens it for you, and then hard press up to bring it back up. And so you have other people in the car, you don't want them to play around with the windows. You can simply press this button and it locks it. Okay. You have your lock and unlock button and your mirror controls right here. Okay. So right here, it's your entertainment system. What I like is that they went with a full digital display. That way you control it, it's by going up or down, on this side for the right, I mean for the left side, and then for the right side, you use this one. And then if you want to select something for this, like for example, you press on this. Just like that. Okay? Alright, we'll go with the left side first. So, let me zoom in. Oops, not too close. Right there. So your first one on the left, you have FM, AM, USB, Bluetooth, uh, wireless, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Alexa, if you want to set up your account, which I'll go over. And custom display in case you don't want to see Alexa or a smartphone. So let's say I want I don't want to see display content. You can turn that off and just show a regular screen, or you can hide the other screens right there. So like if you don't want to see USB because you don't have any USB device in your car, you can take it off and it takes it off your menu screen. You can see what phone's connected, F and the M. What I like about this new display is that they went, especially with the detail, when you turn your left signal, it turns it right in the little car right there. You have your headlights off, it turns them off, and then when you have them on, it turns them on for you. Okay, on the right side, you have power menu flow, so when I put it in drive, I'm about to start driving. Like I said, attention to detail, the little car moved. And I started driving away, shows me what's getting power. So right now it's using the batteries to give power to the wheels. That's kind of cool. It gives you your range in fuel. So right now the car has 319 miles of gas. Before you know the fuel up, it gives me the average MPG. Speed and time. Keep track of your average speed and time on the car. Navigation shows you a compass right now driver attention monitor so if you can see there's four little lines right there that means you're what well, that means if the four bars show that means you're perfect to drive three bars it says you're okay two bars the car will not stop annoying until you actually stop and take a break and one it will not require until you actually stop and take a break somewhere Oops. seatbelt reminders so you want to see who has the seatbelt on, on and off like in this case i'm sitting in the car i don't have my seatbelt once i put on my seatbelt oops back green okay maintenance so you want to come in for maintenance where you're at if you're a miles driver every six thousand miles if you don't drive a lot then that will come every six months that's what honda recommends the good thing with hybrids you don't have to do anything different just file file the maintenance in your book this is where you turn on and off all your safety features so you'll click on the little circle right here to enter the menu And then this is for your lane departure. So when you're driving, you start going away from the lines. The car would tell you lane departure and slightly tilt you back into the road with the steering wheel. I always recommend having all the safety features on for at least a week so you can see what you like and what you don't like. Those blind, uh, the blind spot sensors, the ones I was talking about earlier, those little cars right there, Oops. right there. You can either turn them on and off. I would recommend having them on because it's nice to have a second guidance just in case you're in heavy traffic. And you want to turn off your uh, pre-collision system. So what that does, in case someone brake checks you all of a sudden, the car will warn you to start braking. Do, you don't put attention to that. It will go into brake mode so you won't get into an accident. So we will brake for you so you won't get into an accident. So I always recommend to have that on. It saved me three times on my Civic, twice on my Accord, 
I mean, not on my passport, but it's a nice helpful feature because you never know. It just takes one instant. So that's the one feature I do recommend keeping on the whole time. Okay, let me go back. Next one, if you don't want to see anything, you just want to see a regular speedometer, you can do that as well. Brightness, this way you adjust it. Turn off your traction control, which I wouldn't do. And then again, you can customize the display. It gives you a digital speedometer right there, and it gives you the miles when you're on the road. Okay. Right here on the steering wheel, it gives you your skip buttons when you skip to your next preset. Oh, you have Apple CarPlay to your next song. You have your talk button to you once you plug in a wireless CarPlay, you press and hold this, you can start talking to Siri. Um, your headlights are on default on auto. Also, your high beams will be automatic. So if it's gonna take a car or any um, signs coming up, it will turn on the high beams for you. In case you just wanna do a manual, you can, but I would always leave it in auto. Your wipers, you do one quick swipe up, just one quick swipe. You push on it towards you to put the liquid out. It actually comes from the wipers. It's not hose and then down is the different levels. Okay. On this side, you have your cruise control. You know it's on because you see this little logo up here on the screen, just like that. And then your lane keeping assist. So with the lane keeping assist, you press it. Two lines will appear once you start going on the road. So two lines will appear in between that little car. And you have to be going between 45 to 90 miles per hour. And then the car basically is gonna keep you in the line centered, which is really nice. It's nice when you're taking a long trip. All right, you have two shifters right here. So that's for your generic braking. So I'm gonna use this display right here. It gives me more detail. It's the same thing as this one. It just gives you more detail when you have it right there. Okay, so I'm gonna put it in drive. I'm gonna start driving. You guys can see that it's getting power from the engine and the batteries. Now it's going down to the batteries. Once I start braking, it starts recharging. But if I let go of the brake, just like a regular car, it will keep moving. All right, so now you're asking where the pedal shifters come in handy. Let me go through this little turn and then I'll show you. So I don't know if you guys have driven an electric vehicle before, but the moment you let go, like a Tesla, the moment you let go of the brake, I mean, of the gas, it will start braking. Kind of weird, but what it's doing is the same thing as recharging the battery. So in this case, you can adjust that. So I'm going, I'm gonna start hitting the negative because I'm gonna start braking. So it shows like the D right there. And then once I start letting go, it starts breaking for me from the gecko. If I don't like that, I just hit the plus and it starts doing that by itself. But you can customize the lines. So I'm gonna go all the way to, it's a little hard to explain if I'm being honest with you guys, but I'm gonna go all the way to Focus on D, I'm gonna show you the arrows that pop out. So I'm gonna go right there. Once it's still let go, it says breaking for me, just like that. Sorry about that. So you just have to play around with it and see how you feel. Right now, I just put it in reverse. So this is my reverse camera. I know you guys can hear the humming because hybrids are so quiet, they have to let you know, they have to let pedestrian know the car's coming. So it gives a little bit of a humming sound. Let's say, so this is your wide view. You have a normal view, and then you have a bumper view right there. Okay. This one is for your sonar sensors on the side fenders. So let's say you're in a grocery store, you have two big SUVs next to you and you're backing away, but you don't know there's a car coming. The sensors will pick it up and give you arrows and beeping where the car's coming from. You don't like that for whatever reason, you can always shut it off. I will recommend having it on. So your entertainment system, you have your quick taps right here. You have your regular scraps right here. And then obviously I'm gonna set up how to do wireless CarPlay, but simply click on this and then follow the steps. It has wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and all your compatible apps. You have your general settings. You have your settings you can control, and then you can also have your vehicle settings. So this is what I'm gonna go over. It's what I go over with every customer. So when you have the low tire pressure light and you fill it up, you have to go to TPMS calibration and then click calibrate. 
oops and then you have your light settings meter settings individual settings which i'll leave that to you guys um i go over keyless access setup so right here when you put your hand inside the handle like i did earlier it can open your door or all doors it's so whichever you want prefer after having all doors because i have people coming in and out of the car right like again you can always go and customize this you can turn on the flashing and the beeping, keep them both on, letting you know the car's on, or you can simply turn it off. Next one I wanna go over is door setup. So, once you hit 10 miles per hour, car will lock itself. I like to go when I go to a different gear. So if I go to neutral, reverse, drive, it will lock the doors. Or you can go 10 miles per hour and lock it. This one, when you unlock the doors, it will happen when you open the driver door once you go back to park or once you turn off the ignition so for me as i go to park so the way it works i'm gonna go to a gear car is locked once i go back to park car is unlocked nice and simple that's how i like it last thing is the walk away auto lock so i'm gonna pretend i'm back home take out my seatbelt. i'm gonna turn that on just in case you want to use it so we're back home listening to music done we're in park we're turning off the car i have the key with me Let's open the door so it's supposed to lock the car once you walk away uh keys in my pocket close it one beep let me walk a few steps second beep car's locked so you don't have to worry about locking your car the car will lock for you and then just like that so i don't have to worry about locking the car or opening the car with the key it just does it by itself Let's say you leave the key inside, the car will not lock itself. It uses the same system it uses to detect the cars and the keys inside, so you can um, turn on the car. Okay, so those are basically the main settings I will go after. Everything else they factory, but again, you can go and explore. But that's what I recommend. After you, you want to explore, you're more than welcome to. Here you have different tabs that you can go with a clock, compass. Or see by radio station most people like to keep it on this one you can also make your own custom file and also uh, add hotspot to your car if you want to so profile you can change profile in case you want to go to owner or you can manage the profiles your profile you can name it and then you can also log into your google account and set up alexa and all your other compatible apps you can also set up in in case you don't want no one to use your app uh, your profile so it makes it more customizable to yourself which is really nice here you have quick tabs and you can press and hold to add another one just like that so you can add which other one of the quick tabs let's say you want to use this one oops it's like an ipad so it's kind of there you go just like that so once you're done go home and then when the case want to see it there you go fm like that to tune you do the same thing entering point five enter and to program you press and hold just like that and then you add replace with 93.5 and you can add as many as you want okay down here you have your temperature control so it's dual so your passenger can always change it just like that and you're by yourself make sure you keep it on sync so everything syncs to the driver's side here's your fan speed and your off switch you have your front and rear defroster your ac control where the air, air is gonna flow from to keep the air inside you go down here you have a usb-c charging stations this is a place to put coins your phone cup holders and you have your gear shifter right here you have driving different driving modes so when you go on that you have sport, you have normal, and then you have econ. And you can customize the steering and everything through the screen right here. That's what the individual one was. Your e brake, you know it's on because you see the red light and you see brake. You can release it two ways you can press the brake and then press down, or you can have your seatbelt on. Oh, sorry, guys. Yeah, I'm trying to 
Maybe get some Ray-Ban glasses or a GoPro to help me a little better to strap it in my chest. I don't know. You guys give me suggestion. So far, maybe go with the new Ray-Bans, but we'll see. Put it in drive. I press the gas only. Automatically releases the brake for me, which is pretty cool. Brake hold. I'll turn it on. It says brake hold activated, and it says brake hold right there on the corner. So I'm going to put it in drive. I'm going to complete stop. See how hold appeared? So once I press on the gas, it will disappear and let go of the brake. Once I come back to a complete stop, brake hold comes on again. Once I see hold, I can remove my foot off the brake. So it holds it for me until I hit the gas. So it's perfect for stop and go traffic. Okay. But, and then here you have your sunglass holder. Your controls for the sunroof are right here. This, this one here on the left. So you press back, opens it for you. You wanna make it stop, just hit it again. Close it, you go forward. And to tilt it a little, you press on the button itself. Okay. This will, I will keep it in the middle so it can keep the lights on. So when you turn off the car or open the doors, lights will come on. And then the last thing I want to show you, because I know I said there was a couple tricks with the key, is in case the car shuts down, you don't have access to the trunk. There's a way to there's a way to get inside of it, which I almost forgot to show you guys. So it's located right here in the back. So it's this little square. So all you use is you pry this out, so with the key. Give me one sec, I'm pulling out the key. It's in case the car turns off because the trunk is electric. Pull out the key, you have to go right here. Just have to find the correct corner for it. Sorry for the swearing. There we go. Pop it right there. And then there's a little key slot. Just a, and then you, it's easier with two hands. So I may get some sort glasses that record itself so you can see my two hands. You put it in there, twist it, opens the trunk for you. So just in case of emergencies. Okay? But yeah, again, thank you guys for watching the video. Questions, please let me know in the comments, thoughts, any suggestions. And again, if you guys can help me with sharing the videos, uh, subscribing, and having other people subscribe to me, that would be amazing. Okay? See you guys next time. Bye.